ओके गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन गुड मॉर्निंग मॉर्निंग सर मॉर्निंग सर गुड यस सर यस सर गुड मॉर्निंग ग्रेट सो लास्ट क्लास वी अंडरस्टैंड टिल लास्ट क्लास हाउ टू डिजाइन द कॉर्पोरेट नेटवर्क राइट एंड ऑन द लास्ट टॉपिक वी आर टॉकिंग वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट द ओएसआई मॉडल राइट सो यू अंडरस्टैंड ओएसआई मॉडल इज जस्ट अ रेफरेंस मॉडल राइट व्हिच डिफाइंस हाउ द कम्युनिकेशन हैपेंस यू नो फ्रॉम सोर्स टू डेस्टिनेशन इन द फॉर्म ऑफ सेवन लेयर्स राइट स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम आई मीन फर्स्ट लेयर इज एक्चुअली फिजिकल लेयर बट कम्युनिकेशन स्टार्ट फ्रॉम एप्लीकेशन टू एप्लीकेशन application to physical then physical to application right so how uh, this is very this is important topic from interview perspective so what is osi model what are the seven layers what are the device work on which device works on which layer which protocol works on which layer that is important right so now uh, we design the network right <clears throat> so let me draw a quick architecture For example, this particular destination has the public IP one ninety seven dot zero dot two dot hundred. So, for example, uh, this particular computer wants to communicate with this computer, right? Got it, man? So, in digital communication, how the communication happens? In the digital communication, communication happens in the form of packets. Get it, man? For example, you you want to send some some data to some other computer, to someone else, some other computer, right? So you are doing it. For example, you have five GB of data that you want to transfer. Get it, man? So data transfer happens. That means communication on the digital communication happens on the digital uh, communication. Communication happens in the form of packets, small and small packets, right? That means your five GB of data which will be divided in the small and small packets, and the size of packet will depend on the end-to-end -end bandwidth. If your band, you have taken the internet connection from some ISP. And this system also has taken the information from some ISP. Get it, man? If bandwidth is big, for example, you understand, right? The speed of the communication means your internet. You you have seen, right? Sometime from some website you're downloading something, it is very fast. But some other, uh, you know, uh, website, some other places you're downloading, sometime it is very slow compared to the previous one. You might be thinking, hey, why it is slow? my internet is fast enough but still downloading speed is slow so why it is slow because your downloading speed or uploading speed bandwidth is not depend on always on def de definitely depend on your internet as well but not completely depend on your internet it is end to end if this in this destination also application also has taken the high bandwidth connection and your connection is high bandwidth then only your downloading uploading speed will be high if anyone has the low speed low bandwidth right the speed will be slow get in mind for example you have a tank right water tank water tank what from water tank from water tank right to your home here you have you have big big pipe right high bandwidth you have broad pipe but till outside your home now from your home it is you know very thin pipe right so how much water you will receive this much only right if your pipe is thin but here you have put broader pipe how much water you will receive this much only yes or no so it depend on both hand bandwidth the packet size particular packet size will depend on the end to end bandwidth right whichever one is smaller Thin bandwidth, right? Get I mean that much of a speed will receive, right? So number size of packet is depend on the end-to-end -end bandwidth. Higher the bandwidth, 
bigger the size of the packet. Can you mind? So communication happens. You, you have seen if you are 90s people, so you have seen whenever we used to use Windows XP or Vista, that time whenever we do the copy paste, or we are transferring something from one computer to another computer, one folder to another folder, right? So it was showing like packet, like email envelope is being sent one, two, three, four, like this. Being sent, being sent, being sent like this, right? It was exactly showing the actual communication how it is happening. You, means your total data has been divided with multiple packets and one packet, second packet, third packet, transmitting, right? So if your speed is good, the packet will be bigger and transfer will happen fast. If your speed is slow, slowly, slowly, because it's smaller, smaller packet, right? That is how the actual communication happen. So when you communicate with this system to the system, right? Your communication will happen in the form of packet. In the form of packets, yes or no? So this communication, this digital communication, we can also compare with physical communication. For example, suppose you are staying in Bangalore. Bangalore, you have to send a letter to Mumbai. You are staying in Bangalore, you have to send a letter, means communication letter is also communication, right? Uh, you have to send it to Mumbai. Then letter, letter means actual data, what exactly you want to send. But letter you keep inside the envelope. In the envelope, you have the address. Yes or no? Which or, what, what address you write in envelope? Destination where you are, right? Destination information. Destination address. That means destination address. That means uh, what is the person name and what is his address? What is the person name and what is the, for example, your house number is 506, Kanchan Vihar, Mumbai, right? You have sent the house number, right? But house number of same house, there are multiple people. Yes or no? Now, multiple people to whom specific people name you have to write, a specific person name in that particular house number, which person is you are intended to send. So you write the name of the person as well as address. Yes or no? Because multiple people in the same house. Then you write your own uh, own address also, right? In this case, you might write your own name also and address also. That means your own name, that means your, your name and your address. Means source address and destination address. Source address contain your name, your address, and destination address contain destination address as well as person name. You put uh, in the envelope. Within the envelope, you have the actual data, that means your letter. Get in mind? Now you got the letter, you written, right? Now you will send to Mumbai. Now how will you send from Bangalore to Mumbai? Through some transport medium, either rail transport, road transport, or air transport. Road transport with buses, trucks and all, right? Rail, railway, or through flight. So these are transport medium, which are actually carrying your data from source to destination. Get in mind? Same to same communication happen on the digital communication as well, right? You want to communicate, right? So what happens is your data will be, uh, you know, communication will happen in the form of packet, right? The packet is having two parts again. Same, one part we call as header. Other part we call as data or some people are called as payload, right? Either you call it data or payload, right? So package has been written in header and data. Header contains the control information. Header is kind of envelope. It, it contains the control information. That means source information and destination information from where, so that if any device comes in between, right, uh, to route this packet towards this destination, right? For example, you have postman, right? Postman, you see the letter, okay, he will come to know. Postman cannot see what is there inside in the envelope. He can see the header information, maybe source and destination information. Similarly, there are many devices, for example, router. Router route the packet from one to another. Yes or no? Whatever packet is coming, it will route to the correct destination. So router does not have information to the data. He cannot see, but it has that header information. Because without information from where, what is the source IP, what is the destination IP, router will not be able to route. Your postman is kind of router. 
Yes or no? Which actually, have to, but postman does not have access to the data inside. Get a mind? The header is very important. That means above the envelope that you're writing, the address is very important to ensure that your <coughs> letter, <coughs> sorry, letter is going to the right person. Yes or no? One moment, just hold on. So what will happen? Your header, and this recommendation, header will contain the source information, as well as the information from where the packet has came and where the packet has to go, source and destination. So source information will be like source IP and source port. Means in your home, from your house number, who has sent this letter, right? Source means source IP address and source port. Similarly, in destination information, destination IP means what is the address of the system, right? And destination port. Why destination, why ports are important? Same, like same house, you have multiple people, living multiple people. So we should know exactly to whom you want to send. Similarly, in the system servers, right? For example, you have one server or system, generally uh, to host any application like Facebook, SimExpert, we use server. I will tell you in the later part what is the difference between the typical server and your desktop laptop operating system. Like in Windows, for home purpose operating system, you use Windows 7, Windows 8, Windows 10, and Windows 11 now. These are desktop laptop workstation operating system. Right? Those are having only functionality to do the normal job. While we have other systems called servers. Servers are high capacity, high resources, as well as up, they will look like your operating system only but they will have some extra feature. So any application like your Facebook or any, any uh, application you want to host and you want to give access to outside people or any people, those applications we deploy on the server. Similar servers are similar as desktop, laptop only, but high resources with, you know, uh, some extra features. Understand? For now, you can compare when I'm talking about server, you understand it is kind of workstation, but servers run 24 by seven. Yes or no? Facebook getting down any anytime? No, right? Same expert getting down? No, because this is hosted on the server which run 24 by 7. So laptop desktop does not have capacity or has been designed such a way uh, that you shut down those in, in few hours, 9 hours, 10 hours or one day, right? You're not running your laptop 24 by 7. That means that is the difference based on the usage. I will explain in the later part in detail the difference so that you will have better idea. So, for example, this is the server, means it's a computer. This is a server where you host an application, means you deploy one application. So, this particular server, for example, this is also a server. This particular server may have multiple applications, such application. They have one server, you may have deployed multiple applications. Getting on what I'm saying? So now this server is having multiple applications. So this particular system want to communicate with this system, but with this particular application. <laughs> Get your mind? With this particular application only, but inside this server, there are multiple applications. If this system will send the packet only with IP address, only to IP address, system will get confused. Which application I have to communicate? Because there are multiple applications. Yes or no? Get your mind? There are multiple applications. So we have to define here. Before I initiate the communication, I have to define in this particular IP, this particular system, which application I want to communicate with. Understand what point? And that we can define in terms of port number. Get your mind? Every system will have 65,000. How many port? Anybody knows? 65,000? 535. 535. 535. 65,535. That means every system has the capability. If you have enough resources, right? 65,535 different type of people can stay in a home, right? Similarly, 65,000 application you can deploy on your system. If you have resources, it is ideally not possible, but different applications can be deployed. Get in mind? So any application that you deploy here, 
you install, you have to assign the specific port. Get your mind? Specific port. Out of 65,000, 65,000 port number, right? Any port number, any application that you de deploy here, its particular address will be IP address of particular application. Then its own identity is by its port number. So when I deploy any application on the server, IP address will be server IP address. See, this application also server IP address. This application also same IP address. For all applications, IP address is same. They will be identified individually based on the port number. Get in mind? So if I'm deploying any application here, I have to define the port number as well. Then only any communication from outside will happen toward that particular application. Port number are very important. Yes or no? So whenever packet will uh, initiate, right? So we have to define, uh, so it will header will contain source address, destination address means source IP, destination ID, IP, source port, and destination port. So destiny, source port can be anything, random port number. When the communication will start, right? Source port will be any random port number, more than 1024. Always you will see more than 1024, any random port will happen. This time you're communicating, a 1025, next time you're coming to 1056 or 5067, anything random port number. That's the reason source port does not matter. That means you have to go to the, uh, you know, uh, cognizant company. You should know cognizant company ad, uh, address as well as to whom you want to know. You should know the person name. Or you should know the door, for example, company cognizant and which department you have to go, ID department, finance department is the port. But from home, you, you left from which door? You have multiple door, right? So this door you left, this door you left, this door does not matter. Get in mind? That is the reason. Source IP will be your system IP address and source port will be random port every time. Whenever you communicate, it can be anything more than 1024. But when you are communicating, you should know what is the IP address you want to communicate and what is the destination port number which application you want to communicate. Understand? Get a mind? So that means your header will contain source information and destination information, source IP, source port, destination IP and destination port, etc. Along with that, some other information such as session ID and some other extra information. Get a mind? So now, how will I come to know, for example, when you access the facebook.com, right? So how you are not defining, right? Uh, IP address you are defining when you Type facebook.com, DNS, it will come IP address. But how did it how did it come to know about the port number? Because of course, any communication will happen on a specific port number. Yes or no? And you understand whenever you deploy any application on the server, you have to define port number as well. It's mandatory. Otherwise, your application will not be able to communicate. IP address will be server IP address and port number you have defined. So what do you think that when we Facebook has deployed the facebook.com website in a server, what port number it has assigned on the Facebook so that people can access facebook.com? 443. 443. You know what happens? Out of 65,000 port number, 65,535, right? Out of these port number, any port number which is free, right? For example, in my server, one application I have deployed, one application I have deployed, and port number, for example, 35. Port number 35. Can I deploy another application by using same port? No, 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 no right? Sir. That no. port is already blocked. Port is nothing but kind of you can see. The because uh, in, input pipe kind of thing, pipe you can see, right? So this pipe input is already used. This port number is already used, right? Means 35 port number I have already stick with this particular port. If I want to deploy another application, I can't use this 35 port number because it is already blocked for this particular application. Get in mind? So I can deploy any application on any of the free port number within 65,535, any free port number I can use. 
for example i have to deploy some application here so that my internal users in the company can access for example uh, 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 one one ticketing rule application right from where you can raise the ticket service request right i can host in any port number which is free on this particular server out of 65000 so what happens is in this case what happens is whenever i access that application i have to enter specifically ip address as well as port number then this server owner will, will will inform to us okay that this is the ip address and this particular port number you have to enter get in mind because you have deployed this application on particular port number but now you know whenever you access the facebook.com you do not enter the port number you just enter https colon double slash facebook.com yes or no do we define port number no right aina says aina says that within the organization you can use any port number to communication right but aina has reserved some of the port number for specific services so that people even do not have to define you don't have to tell facebook don't have to tell on which port number we have to we have deploy a facebook otherwise you have to tell okay facebook.com bhai what is the port number for facebook what is the port number of simex but everybody will have to ask right because nobody is aware if you if everybody start keeping different different port number for different different services everybody will get confused yes or no what is the port number for simex but what is the port number for facebook.com what is the port number for, for orkut.com right so different different port numbers right so aina has reserved some of the port number specific on the public internet on the public network for example https means web access on https port number is 443 443 if you want to if you want to deploy a website web application and if you want to give the access to the outside people you have to deploy a website on port number 443 or port number 80 on http when you type on the browser for example browser also understand automatically when you type on the browser http s colon double slash sim expert.com simexpert.com by typing https browser will understand i have to send this packet in the communication of port number 443 Four four three, right? You need not to define the port number here. You need not to define because HTTPS itself port number is four four three. Get in mind. So do you think? See, you have option. For example, if you have deployed a website other than four four three, for example, eight four four three, eight four four three, you have option. You can deploy Facebook dot com eight four four three also any port number, but. If you just enter HTTPS colon slash simexpert dot com, browser will only send the packet and port number four four three because default port number for web access for HTTPS is four four three. In that case, if you have deployed some other port number, then you have to write colon and port number. Yes or no? But people may not be aware of that. What port number you are using, right? So Aina has reserved those port number means HTTPS means port number four four three. If any communication happening on HTTP, then port 80. number eighty. Eighty. If you type HTTP, browser will by default send the packet and port number eighty. Right. In the public communication, on the internet communication, right, some ports are reserved well-known port number for specific services. If I see the packet, there are devices like router and all. Uh, firewall they will come to know connection coming from which ip going to what which ip which port number right so buying checking the port number especially destination port number because this particular port number is defined to destination right source port number can be anything so importantly destination port number on which application traffic is going is going and on which particular ip address and port number source port number and any anything source port number does not matter when you do the analysis also For cyber security, when you were start working, right? You see the logs to understand. Logs means 
the evidence i will tell you in the later part so uh, you will see okay this is the source ip this is the destination ip this is the destination port right so by seeing the source ip you will understand okay this particular source ip connection is coming to this particular destination ip connection is going and on particular port for example port number is 443 by seeing the port number 443 what will you understand you will understand somebody is accessing the website hosted on this particular destination https website http443 yes or no if port number is 80 then somebody accessing the website and which protocol http same communication happen on http https both but https is secure application protocol hypertext transport protocol secure as means secure that means the communication from your system to the application will be encrypted so that's the reason nowadays majority of website are https that means ssl is enable ssl means secure socket layer when we i type https s means secure and secure means ssl secure socket layer secure socket layer will be created from your system from your browser towards that application get mind if this system is communicating with this system on https if it is http enable that means what information you are entering right if man is in middle somewhere is tracking your session cannot read because all the communication will be encrypted encrypted understand encrypt means will not be readable format anybody can read he will see 1 2 3 4 8 abcd like this encrypted format actual data can only be read by the application nobody in between that is the reason sometime you access the website it shows that connection toward this website is not secure you see like this connection toward this website is not secure go ahead on your own risk that means may possible that it is not secure anybody in between can see what communication happen can read the information can can you know compromise your critical information especially when you enter your inquiry form or debit card credit card information you are entering right get mind so those in, that is the reason majority of the website nowadays are https not http you understand so browser automatically understand when you type http or https similarly there are many other ports number which are well known for specific services so when you do the analysis right being a sock engineer sock analyst you do the investigation analysis from where the packet is connection is coming where it is going over oh, this specific connection oh connection is going on this particular port number yes or no so you understand the traffic right for example now you see source ip is this system on my source ip is this particular system ip address and destination ip is this particular system ip address this is the destination ip and port number is uh, uh, for example port number is 25 destination port number is 25 so what is this communication about smtp smtp that means that means what that means what source is doing email email hmm? that means it's a email communication 25 port number is well known for email smtp lot of noise from your end it's a smtp port right whenever you send an email it will go on port number 25 right on the packet header on the header so there are many device in between the communication which will have access to the header that means your source ip destination ip source port destination port and so on they will have access get mind so if you see those devices if you see the communication happen on port number 25 that means from this particular source ip communication is happen happen to this particular destination ip on port number 25 that means what this person has done this person has sent an email yes or no if it is happening if you see the port number is 23 then then what do you telnet. think telnet 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 is the is the, the protocol using which you can take the remote access to your system right telnet if i see port number 22 ssh 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 
as such a again a secure uh, way of taking the remote access as a such secure cell as such full form is secure cell you can take the remote access to any system in a secure way generally telnet is are ye noise kiske side se hai let me check whenever you unmute lot of noise is coming hmm <clears throat> so telnet also for remote access and ssg also for remote access but what different http and http is having similar differences between telnet and ssh like http communication happen on the clear text format means not encrypted format not secure similarly telnet is not secure whenever you take the remote access from one system to to another system other system access communication happen on the clear text format means data is not encrypted while if you do the ssh communication is encrypted right so it is recommended to use the to use ssh instead of telnet so any communication you see a port number 22 that means ssh or 24 number is for what purpose other purpose or more purpose for 22 secure <clears throat> for encrypted sftp sftp secure file transfer protocol file transfer if you are, if you want to uh, you know send uh, you know big size of file there is application which use the sftp protocol secure file transfer protocol securely you can send you know the big file from one source destination on F sftp and sftp also work on 22 port number right another protocol is ftp ftp means file transfer protocol right which work on two port number 20 and 21 21 so sftp same as ftp but ftp do not send the data securely while sftp establish the secure connection right so sf ftp is not allowed in majority of the company because mm -hmm. communication the data transfer that you are doing using ftp is on clear text format that means not encrypted not secure that is why so whenever i see what is the destination port number based on that i understand what kind of service being requested is somebody going on access me taking the remote access 25 sending the email is the email, email services 24443 means http somebody accessing the website right if connection is port number 53 then dns dns you know what happens once you access the facebook.com first of all to get the ip address it will do the dns lookup mean dns query to a dns server right so dns query port number is 53 we call a dns port number whenever system queries the dns right for dns lookup right it communicate on port number 53 so these are the reserved port number is standard port number for specific services right so if i see the communication if i see the logs means whatever communication happens right there are many devices which record the activities in the form of log that we call as logs for example if i am going here right i can see my uh, uh, what what we call as steps and i can see the evidence right uh, my shoes uh, 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 footprint right shoes footprint print. Ah, uh, footprint you can see shoes, right? I can see it here. That's the evidence, right? Foreign system will come and see. Okay, so this was the sign. This was the shoes, eight number, and all this stuff, right? That means on the earth, on the land, right? Similarly, when the communication happen, right? These all devices that we will be talking about slowly, slowly, will record the activities in the form of logs. Logs are we call as event, right? So if you want to see what communication happened before one hour back, one day before, one hour, one one years back. what device communicated what device on which port number what communication happen what data transfer happen who has access what website right there are devices which are record those activities get away so what communication happen from which source ip what destination ip which port number till how much time at what time these all activities will be recorded in the form of logs yes or no so different devices will have different kind of access some device will have only uh, header access like Source IP destination IP. Some devices will have the data packet access also. Get a mind? So it depends what level of devices, what kind of devices are they, right? That means end to end, what communication happen, what data transfer happen, who has access what, who has transferred what, who have communicated what, 
which system we can check it based on the logs in this sock in cyber security when you specific work on the sock it's the full game of logs only means what happened what is happening right now everything will be recorded in the form of logs full game that you may be working all the time in the sock is based on the logs forensics cyber forensics gade murti ukhadna forensic team will go right some matter happen after some okay we have to call forensic team to check if any evidence has left right some fraud happened some crime happened cyber forensics cyber forensic team will go okay cyber forensic will not will not go anywhere remotely will log in on the system or device they will check the logs for for them for physical uh, this uh, forensics they will go physically on the and and, and check the uh, fingerprint and everything right here fingerprint and those yeah. evidence are logs what communication happen we will log in on the device and check the logs what communication happen and check it out which user has done what time has done what kind of data transfer happen what malware has come from which email has, it has come or from which site you have downloaded this all information can be collected full game of logs only right it's very important then to know the headers and know the port numbers right that is the reason it is very important and most frequently asked question in interview because you are doing this analysis on a daily basis where incident are coming you are investigating you are reporting you are taking the action right so you should know the well known port numbers yes or no the interviewer asks what is the port number for kerberos what is the port number for pop3 what is the port number for sftp right you should have in mind all the time because working on the sock the homework for you is you search in google well known port numbers well known port numbers so these all are the some many port number which are well known right well known port numbers if for example if i am taking your interview and i am asking what is the port number of smt first question what is the port number for smtp if you are not able to answer i will decide you did not work and i will not be interested to take your interview further smtp https dns right uh, ftp these are very frequently used and very well known port number if i ask kerberos pop3 some other port number if you are not able to know and that's that's i'm considering also that's fine you might not be seeing this traffic usually but dns port number https smtp telnet these are the frequently used port number right ssh if you are not able to answer that means you did not work or you are not passionate about your work i will decide at the same time only that i am not going to hire you i will just uh, take your interview just for the you know uh, formality get me so make sure that you go through well known port numbers very important kam karte hain ha badha de sir can i ask question yes sir actually uh, uh, source port and the destination port uh, it is possible to same or not mm -hmm. i said destination port number is all source port number is always more than 1024 can i if random communication have a randomly but there are 0.001 zero, 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 percent chances whenever you are sending for example uh, actually you are not sending you are sending for example uh, 1560 communication on this is very not very well known port number but any application is host on this port number you are accessing right but we understand source will be more than 1024 but it is, it is random port number we do not define source port number automatically once you communicate automatically source port will take anything get me that's the reason from investigation perspective also we are not bother about what is source port source port get me because source port can be any random port number we do not define source port number right so maybe which is 001% chances that you are finding this bracket this port number and source is also this port number is very i have never seen this combination get your point <clears throat> Okay, so <clears throat> yes, sir. One zero four, one zero two four means one zero two five. Means greater than ah, beyond this. More than one zero two four, anything. Three sixty five thousand five hundred and thirty five. So now you understand the importance of port number. 
right yes. so yes now yes sir i have a question sir myself dushan uh, sir actually the, you said the, the packet which contain header and data right, right. so the address and port number uh, we can place it in header right you we are not placing it automatically no, 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 no. you are using right application will keep the data once you enter the port number if, okay. if you are not entering port number right okay. Okay. browser will take an https it will understand Okay, okay. If it is other than a well-known port number, a specific port number, then you have to enter if you're accessing through browser, right? Uh -huh. For example, whenever you send an email, are you ever entering port number 25? No, no. no right? No, no. Automatically, Outlook or any email application knows that you're sending email and email port number is 25. Automatically, it will send the packet in 25 only. Get in mind? Yes, sir. sir. IP address and port, uh, we can found it in header, right? Header, huh? yes. Header means you can't open the packet. It's not an envelope that you physically can open and check. Yes, sir. Even, there are devices which can open those packet. Data and physical. Being a human being, I can't, okay, let me check this packet and let me open it. It's not a physical, right? It's a digital. Okay. Once yeah. it is received, then it will be segregated. Right. Uh, once sir, you I see the information, you can't see the header and and data while it is traveling, right? Once it is delivered, then you can open the information. Yes, yes. yes. Okay. So, love, sir, Gautam, this side. I have one question here. Yes. Yeah, 3389 is also uh, for uh, remote desktop, right? That is for uh, Windows remote desktop. Windows oh. RDP. RDP. Okay, so that's specific for uh, Windows. This telnet, okay. you can do through command line. This oh. gives command okay. line access. Telnet. Terminal. SSH for Linux we use 22 for SSH we do remotely we take the command through command line right the port oh, number that right. you said through, that is for RDP connection yeah thank you so now now you understand right you wanted to send a letter right then you have envelope and inside that you have an actual letter right and there you have source and destination information then transport like rail transport uh, road and flight transport air transport you have through that you will send the letter Similarly, for packet also, you need someone who needs some transform medium who can carry this information, bring this information from source to destination. Yes or no? So who carries the data packet in, in uh, digital communication? What do we call them? What do we call that? TCP UDP. We call TCP that UDP. transport. Control protocol. Transport protocol. Protocol. Proto call but we have two that's why i'm writing protocols so any of the transfer protocol will bring the data from source to destination so what are those protocol transfer protocol tcp udp tcp and udp tcp and udp tcp stand for transport control transmission control, transport control. Transport control. 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 Transmission control protocol and UDP user data control protocol, right? Like your truck, buses, uh, like road transport, air transport, right? Air transport, uh, rail transport. Similarly, we have transport protocol which are actually responsible for bringing this data from source to destination. So either you can use rail transport or you can use air transport, right? Similarly, either you can use UDP. TCP or UDP, any of the protocol you can use for communication, right? Now, why do this protocol? There should must be a difference, right? There must be some criteria, which protocol we should use when I should use TCP or UDP. Yes or no? Get in mind? So, you know, <clears throat> this TCP and UDP, which brings this protocol, uh, this packet from source to destination, there are difference. I have explained you in the video in depth in my YouTube, video is TCP and UDP, what is the difference between the TCP and UDP and what is the three-way handshake mechanism in TCP, which is very important and frequently asked question. I'll give, give a brief understanding here, but in depth, you have to go through on my video, which in YouTube, YouTube channel, you know, right? Team expert, right? So on that, you can type or go on the videos and type TCP and UDP, right? On which I explain yeah. what is TCP and U what is transport protocol, what is TCP and UDP, what is the difference between those, and when we use TCP, when we use UDP, and what is the three-way handshake mechanism 
of stabilizing the connection on TCP. <clears throat> Just write this homework, then let me tell you the brief understanding. See that the major difference between TCP and UDP is, you understand, right? Whenever you communicate communicate anything, you transfer some data, data will be, you know, break down the small, small packets, right? If you're using TCP protocol, so what happens is, in application, for example, you have deployed some application, right? So in the application only, you have to define, first of all, IP address will be system IP address, then port number, then along with the port number, you have defined protocol. On which port port number uh, my system is going to listen, right? The communication as well as on which protocol. On the application itself, you have to define. If application is going to listen on TC protocol, then it, it will accept the communication on TCP only. You can't use UDP yourself. Get in mind? If I have configured TCP, UDP, then it will communicate on UDP only. You have to use UDP communication. It is not dependent on the client, it is dependent on the application. What port number, what protocol and port number you have configured. If you have configured UDP port number, UDP protocol and port number, then communication you have to establish on UDP only. If you transfer TCP, it will not work. Understand? Right? So you have why you deploy the application it will ask TCP UDP or uh, TCP or UDP, right? Which port number? So what is the difference, right? So if I am using TCP protocol for this communication, right? I have deployed certain application on yeah, this application on, on TCP. TCP. What will happen is this data will be break down multiple packets. Now source will send one packet. Once it will send one packet, destiny will receive the data packet, right? So once it send, it will wait for a stipulated, stipulated time to get the knowledge. Get mean? It is not going to second, send the second packet again at, at the same time. It will just send one packet and wait for acknowledge. Once this destination receive one packet, it will acknowledge. It will send the ACK packet. ACK. Get okay. mean? That I have received this particular communication, this particular packet. Then once destination received the acknowledge, the destination, okay, what I have delivered has been received. Get mind? And then it sends the second packet. Then it will wait for a simulated time to get that knowledge. If knowledge comes, then send the third packet. Let's say third packet has been dropped somewhere. The gestion will not receive. It will wait for a simulated time to get that knowledge. If knowledge is not coming, it will send the same packet again. Because the source will understand that knowledge did not come, that means packet might be have been dropped somewhere. Then it will send the same packet again. Get in my mind, right? So <clears throat> same packet again. Now, for example, same packet sent. It, now it is received. It will be send that knowledge. Third time, fourth packet has been sent. Acknowledge did not come again. Maybe packet has been dropped or maybe acknowledge has been dropped somewhere. Packet received, acknowledge has been dropped this time. Again, it will not receive the knowledge. Again, it will send the same packet. Now, same packet is already received by this one. It should do double packet now. It will remove the duplicate by cyclic redundancy check. Some feature it is having, so that it will remove the, it will not create duplicate packet. It will discard the duplicate. And then now it will acknowledge. So in this way, you can do the TCP is guaranteed delivery of protocol. Yes or no? Means whatever data you are forwarding, sending to destination is being guaranteed delivered to the destination. Yes or no? By using the acknowledge mechanism. Because every packet acknowledge, every packet acknowledge, Knowledge not coming, it will send the same packet again. So this way, TCP ensure that the guaranteed delivery of data. Whenever it will receive by destination, it will receive with full integrity. Full integrity means no manipulation, no modification. Yes or no? Full integrity. Understand? Understand what I'm saying? Uh, with full integrity means actual data will be received. And also, in TCP, before this kind of communication start, it also establish the session, establish the connection. That is what we call a three-way handshake process in TCP. Before TCP starts sending the data, it ensures that means it, it establishes the connection to check. Before it send the packet, actual communication will send. It will send send. Send means 
Hello. That will wait for it. Hello message. Hello means send. It will send a send packet and wait for acknowledge whether destination is listening or not, responding or not. Right? Then destination will respond with synac message. Synac. Yes, I am listening. I am able to listen. Means what you are sending, I am able to receive it. Then, because it sends synac, right? Synac to the source. Then destination also will like to hear whether what I am sending, whether source is able to receive or not. Right? Then source will send the ACK message. ACK. Once it receives the ACK message, right? Connection will get established. So this is called as three-way handshake mechanism of stabilizing the connection in TCP. So you understand, first of all, advantage of TCP is it is stabilizing the connection first to check whether uh, source is able to hear or destination is able to hear or not. And second thing, when actual data transfer happen, it waits for acknowledge every time to ensure that guaranteed delivery of data with full integrity. Get mind? And this advantage of this, this communication is this will be comparatively with UDP, it will be a slower communication. Why it is slower communication? Means every time it is waits, it waits for acknowledge. Many times when there is no packet drops, there are many scenarios when there is no packet drop, but it's still one packet acknowledge, one packet acknowledge, one packet acknowledge, wait for acknowledge. It's still at a time. That means it can be a slower communication, slower protocol compared to UDP. While UDP is the fastest protocol. Why? Because there is no connection. UDP is not a connection oriented protocol. That is why we call it TCP is connection oriented protocol. I explain you in the video, you watch it again. Okay. And note down important. We call as TCP is connection oriented protocol because it stabilizes the connection before the actual communication happen. While UDP is connection less protocol. That means it does not establish the communication connection. TCP is guaranteed delivery of data, but VDP is not guaranteed delivery of data because once uh, you transfer the data, it will break down the packets. One packet send, then second, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seven. Do not bother whether destination listening or not listening. Even this source will not have information whether destination has received the information or not. It's responsibility to send the packet. It do not bother about whether destination is receiving or not. Yes or no? And there will be some challenge sometime when this link is slower, slower link, right? That time some packet might be dropped. Maybe the source is buffering or some pipeline may be dropped and you might not receive the actual information. The packet may be dropped. Understand? Yes or no? In that case, sometime packet may be dropped, but uh, you know, uh, you'll not be aware of that packet has been dropped. Yes or no? That is the reason whenever speed is, the, so, but you understand when I'm using UDP, communication will be faster because it send the packet continuously, do not wait for acknowledge. While TCP send packets, acknowledge, then second and third, right? While TCP continuously, UDP continuously. Yes or no? When integrity is the matter of concern, when guaranteed delivery of data is matter of concern, we should use which protocol? TCP. When, TCP. when speed of communication is a matter of concern, we should use UDP. 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 What communication I am having right now? Audio communication, video communication? UDP. 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 WhatsApp UDP. UDP. do? UDP. Protocol? UDP. 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 Uh, UDP. UDP. Right, because WhatsApp call, what, what do you think that if you're making a WhatsApp call, you said, hello, Sulab here, right? Or something I'm talking about. What? So uh, I'm saying that, okay, yesterday I was going, I, I, I went to movie, I watched this movie and all, I was explaining the story. In between the story, something has been missed. That is, a, that is not a big problem, right? But if I'm telling you the story, something I said to you, but you did not respond. I'm waiting for a respond. You know, I'm saying, hello, are you able to listen to me? Are you able to hear me? Then first question response come late. 
I asked the answer of first uh, second question. Now you responded to first question. Misunderstanding, right? So here, speed matters. I want the real time communication. In between something missed, that is fine. But I want the real communication. Yes or no? UDP. I am having this this video communication right now with you. If my head is like this, if I'm turning this, right? If while turning, some packet drop happen. So my head will directly come from here to here. Not, not like here, right? Packet drop happen. You know that my head will come from here to here only. Some packet drop and happen, fine. But what if my head coming like this? Then I stop here, buffering, getting the packet. Then slowly, slowly come here. This is not a good experience, right? That is the reason for video communication, live streaming, internet calling. We use UDP. While for any text communication, I'm sending an email, email, I'm doing a chat with you. When you do the chat, it uses the PCP. Otherwise, meaning of your communication will get changed, right? If any packet missed, you will ask him, what has you what you have messaged? And meaning what change because some packet has been missed in between, right? So this text communication should happen on TCP. TC protocol, right? So those are the use cases. And these are protocol. These are transport layer of protocol, TCP and UDP, which actually brings your data from source to destination. You watch this video, complete it. Okay, mm -hmm. TCP and UDP. What is the use case and what is the difference and what is the three-way handset protocol on the UDP and TCP, uh, on, on the TCP, okay? Now, Now, yesterday we were talking about designing of a puppet network, same expert network we have designed, right? Now this user having even an internal IP address, 10.0.0.2, we have, we have net, right? Now after designing our network, our internal users are able to access the internet. They're able to communicate with each other also. And they're able to access the internet also. Yes or no? Get a moment? Similarly, that means you have home, you have gate. Your people can go outside as well as outside people can also come inside and steal your money, steal your data, right? Temper your information, information maintenance, temper your assets, right? Can come in and can have a fight. Yes or no? Because you have gate, but no lock, no security guard. You are an office, but no security guard. Similarly, it is not a regulated internet access. That means it's an open access. Anybody can go outside, but anybody can come inside also. You understand, right? It's a public network. You are connected with public network. In public, you have good people also and bad people also, cyber criminals. Yes or no? You go, you, you, you have your company, you have gate, but do not keep any security guard or will happen. And unauthorized people will come inside. Yes or no? So we are securing our office, right? With security guard. To secure your physical office, you have gate. And behind the gate, you have security guard. So whenever anybody comes to your company on the gate, security guard will ask where from where you have come. Where you have to go which department and to whom you want to meet? Yes or no? It checks, it asks, and then it will check some backend information on backend database, whether the person is authorized to go inside or not. Yes or no? So where it will check some backend database, so backend database will be maybe, maybe the person has some pass, person is going for the interview, maybe HR has sent some call letter. 
he may call letter or maybe internal person who has invited that person he might have sent an email to security guard now security guards are also digital now they are using computer especially in it companies yes or no he will check on email okay this person is there on the invite list okay okay so you have to meet to the person uh, ravi right okay he will stay. okay fine then we'll take your photos and we'll write a register means he will do the entry some company will take the photos why we are taking photos entries evidence logs in in digital devices these are actually the logs yes or no so that at the end somebody ask who has come what time he has come you have timing when you are writing security guard will be there they are writing the correct information or not yes or no security guard can make the mistake but this device cannot make the mistake because they have configured in such a way they will record the information from which ip connection has come where on which destination ip which port number what communication happen right allow disallow same security guard will write right that has evidence that we can check forensic perspective some incident happen who all came yesterday we can check on the register on the on his computer or we can check the photos also which all people has came that right? mean then he will allow this he will allow majority of many of the uh, you know critical company will see security guard also will check go along with you many of the company will see security guard will not take you inside and give you the freedom to go anywhere because you had to go with the hr department you came to the sector but you have to go to the hr department right but you might go in the it department finance department yes or no similarly the connection to what this particular ip right but but which port number you want to go maybe you are allowed to access the website but you are not allowed to take the remote access on sh or telnet that has to be restricted right means you can go inside the company but go to the hr department only for the interview not the finance department so we can tell the security guard allow him for, uh, for hr only not other finance, other department means we can create the rule policies and tell the security guards similarly the security guard records right and filter out what has to be allowed and record also right but <clears throat> but what happens is security guard is human being right some information which we have not even communicated for example one person is coming with the uh, with the call letter for the interview and has the gun or coming with the gun we have not even communicated security guard anybody come with the gun then no not allowed yes or no if even it is a pass but coming with the gun he will call to the police without even instructions because security guard is human being yes or no he is having his own sense what is good what is bad he can decide yes or no but the security devices that we use in the internet are not human being they only work with the information that we have given what is blacklisted what is not blacklisted what has to be allowed what is disallowed the rule or signature we have to create the policy or signature we have to create on those devices the work done by security guard except his own logic the information that we provide security guard same work means security guard check from where you have come where you have to go to whom you want to wait then allow or disallow same work is done by the which device in the digital network firewall firewall same work is done by the firewall in digital network same work means similar work similar work is done by firewall firewall it's a firewall unauthorized connection will burn right it's a firewall means it's an it's on the gate of your network it's a firewall if any unauthorized will come it will burn the meaning of that actually the meaning actually why we have uh, the have given a firewall it's a wall of fire right unauthorized people will get war means it will disallow get mine that's the reason we call this device this device name is firewall means it regulate the inbound and outbound connection it's a interface between internal and public internet connection right ideally we have we should have a firewall on the on the, uh, on the gateway apart from that there will be some other firewall inside the company but firewall if you talk about is a it's a gate it's a 
gateway security between two networks and generally call as between your external network and internal network between the internet and your internet it will safeguard your internal network from outside that get a mean so it can regulate inside traffic as well as uh, sorry uh, uh, inbound traffic means outside to inside as well as inside to outside also ghar ka bhedi lankad hai there might be possible that you have your user your security guard check right when you many the company when you outside check bhai back check karwao back yes or no they they will check your bags to check if you are carrying something important things physical physical theft right get a mind similarly firewall also check what your internal people are accessing outside where they are going what application they are accessing what they are downloading right we can also restrict use in the firewall firewall can also restrict might be internal user is accessing some website which is actually phishing website malware website from where some malware have been downloaded firewall check over this ip address as pieces it will block it that even so firewall is an interface between the inside and between internal and external network right which filter out the traffic internal and external traffic right if anything malicious ip uh, malicious communication is found it will block the communication now for example this communication is happening uh, 199.0.2.100 and this particular ip is having public ip for example 197.0.2.200 okay so once the packet will come right packet will issue from here right then it has to communicate with the system right and that's what i'm saying so it will first hit to the router router is in the gateway right this router is in gateway gate that's the reason this router we call a gateway router get in mind in your home also you have multiple doors so you can consider your gate that you have outside that you call a gateway router inside also you have doors so those are in internal routers get in mind on the gate you have lock gateway firewall inside it bedroom also and you have wardrobe inside also you have lock everybody has your lock those may be internal firewall one firewall is necessary on the gate and there will be further filtering to filter anybody who is allowed to come on your living room may not be allowed to go to your bedroom right so bedroom also you have door maybe lock also similarly this is gateway firewall or perimeter firewall perimeter either gate or perimeter you understand right what is this border we call as perimeter right yes or no if you have some some someone on the perimeter perimeter security right the perimeter only somebody will come inside yes or no means from here only somebody will come inside the surgeon this firewall <laughs> perimeter firewall or gateway firewall and this router is gateway router or perimeter router understand which is securing our network from outside threat yes or no so once the packet hit to the router packet is having two parts what are those parts header and network and host so header and data right ip address ip address information is is, is the which layer information ip address comes under which layer any device which have the understanding of ip address falls under which layer of osi transport layer transport layer transport layer, transport layer. layer number network three three network three. any okay, device okay. which has the understanding of ip address we work the final communication happen based on the ip address work on the layer number 3 yeah, that means network yeah. layer network layer get mind router route the traffic based on the ip address that's the reason router address are yaar kis kam video aur audio dono chalu hai one moment just hold down टर्न ऑन करना कर लग ठंड लग रही है फुल टी शर्ट फुल शर्ट पहन के आया करो क्योंकि तुमको ठंड लगती है मेरे को गर्मी लगती है हाँ एक्चुअली एसी का लोकेशन अगर यहाँ रखते तो मुझे ही आता आप लोगों को नहीं आता इसलिए हम अब कर नहीं सकते ना एक बार हो गया तो हो गया कितना सेटअप लगता है उसमें 
इतना लंबा पाइप जाता है और वो भी कॉपर का इट इज नॉट इजी टू ट्रांसफर हियर टू हियर वो वन टाइम सेटअप होता है हाँ सो वट आम से क्या बोल रहा था टेलिंग अबाउट आईपी एड्रेस इज लेयर थ्री इन्फॉर्मेशन ये सो नो एनी डिवाइस विच डज द फाइनल कम्युनिकेशन बेस्ड ऑन द आईपी एड्रेस लेयर थ्री डिवाइस स्टैंडर्ड राउटर इज लेयर थ्री डिवाइस ये सो नो यू नो वॉट हैपन्स इन राउटर दर इज अ टेबल कॉल राउटिंग टेबल वेन एवर यू कनेक्ट एनी केबल टू द राउटर पोर्ट इट विल अंडरस्टैंड विच डिवाइस हैज बीन कनेक्टेड एंड व्हाट इज द पाथ ऑफ दिस राउट दिस पर्टिकुलर डिवाइस ऑन विच इंटरफेस फॉर एग्जांपल राउटर हैज 12 इंटरफेस 12 पोर्ट्स 12 पोर्ट्स नाउ व्हेन एवर कनेक्शन इज कम फ्रॉम दिस पर्टिकुलर आईपी इट हैज टू गो ऑन दिस पर्टिकुलर आईपी द राउटर विल चेक ऑन दिस राउटिंग टेबल ओके दिस पर्टिकुलर डेस्टिनेशन इज कनेक्टेड ऑन विच इंटरफेस विच पोर्ट पोर्ट नंबर आर3 देन इट विल सेंड द ट्रैफिक ऑन पोर्ट नंबर आर3 Get it, so when we connect to the router, we have to define the routing table. It is not mean that you have connected. That means communication will happen. We have to tell to the router, right, on which port number, which device has been connected. Sometimes you are device is connected, but communication is not happening because routing table route has not been created. You call to network team, and they will create the route and tell to the router. Okay, this interface, this particular, this is the path of reaching this particular destination. That is called the routing information, and router will have routing table. So whenever router receive any packet on particular port number, it will check on the routing table. This path for particular destination, I have to send the packet on which port. Port means it is not a port like five one three. Which interface I will tell? Which interface? Physical port means it's not a digital port like four four three and all. It do not understand the port number. It only understand IP address, right? So when I talk about port means which interface you have whole cat five cable you inside, right? Ports interface which interface it has to send the packet. So router is layer three device. That means once the packet hit to the router, router will only access able to access the header part. Data is layer five six seven information. Application layer of information and router is does not work on application layer. It is layer three device. That means layer three information. That means IP address. Header is having source IP destination, having source port destination port, but it will only be able to read header and again only read IP address. What is the source IP and what is the destination IP? It will not come to know what is the port number and protocol because port number and protocol falls under. Which layer? Port number and protocol. Layer four. Four. Layer, layer four. Layer that four. means transport information. Transport information. Based on port number and protocol, it transport happen, right? Yes or no? So port number and protocol falls under the transport protocol. So any device work on the layer four only will come to know what is the port number and protocol. So router only source. Whenever packet comes to the one of the interface router, it will open the header. And read the source IP, destination IP, and check the routing table and forward the traffic. Route the route your connection. We call it route the router. Router. Hindi में बोलते हैं पथ प्रदर्शक. Which shows the route, right? Means you want to go somewhere. Okay, you you follow this step, then go from here, right? That is called router. Router will not ask why you want to go. If you ask someone, भैया, I want to go to SSR. What is the path? Is he going to ask why you are going to go? Who you want to meet on that sir? He's not asking, right? The person work is to tell you, okay, boy, you, you move this side, then take the right end, then go on that and right, then then left and right, then you your destination will get arrive, will arrive, right? He will not ask to whom you want to meet there and why you are going there, right? Same work is done by the router, right? To only check what is source IP, what is destination IP, router information, right? Once it is route means it does not check whether it is secure, it is um, it is just basic connection or whatever, it does not check. Right. Then once the router route the packet, it will head to the which device? After router, it will head to the firewall. Firewall, right? It will head to the firewall. Now firewall will be able to open uh, which uh, which part? Both part or any one part? What do you think? Header, header part, header part one. Header part. Okay. Typical. 
टिपिकल स्टैंडर्ड नेटवर्क सिक्योरिटी फायर वॉल इज लेयर थ्री एंड लेयर फोर प्रोटोकॉल layer three and layer four firewall right firewall network security firewall work on the layer number 3 and 4 that means it has understanding of ip address port number and protocol it cannot see what information is being transferred me it don't have uh, access to read the data part means layer 6 7 5 6 7 information application generally 5 6 7 information we call as in the application layer Got your mind? <clears throat> What happened in this case? Firewall is layer three, layer four. What do you call? It will open a header of data. What part is open? Header. 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 Header, header. header. header part. Header I am part. telling you, <laughs> firewall is not a secure layer three and layer four. Data falls under which layer? Layer number seven, right? The final data will be opened by the application. Okay. When you access the website, you can see the website on browser only, right? And browser comes on which layer? Layer number seven. Application layer. Application. Encryption, description, and presentation. Uh, presentation, encryption, description, session establishment. Generally, five, six, seven we refer as a, as a uh, you know uh, application layer. But seven generally application your browser or, or web application that you have deployed comes under the application layer, right? But generally, application itself having five, six, seven information. For example, your browser is application. It encrypts the data itself, right? I mean, presentation happens on the application itself. That's the reason. And connection also established using browser only. That's the reason. Application having five, six, seven layer access. Yes or no? Understand? That's the reason. Application layer is application only. Application, but means after seeing the data, you can see application has seen the data. But encryption, decryption, encryption the traffic, right? As well as session establishment also done by the browser only. Yes or no? So browser have the access of five, six, seven, six present uh, uh, presentation may not be all be because if encryption decryption does not happen, then presentation layer will not come in the part. Get it? If any device is not encrypted and decrypted, for example, HTTP, HTTP communication encryption decryption is not required because neither it is encrypting and nor necessarily encrypt decrypt the data. Understand? Generally, application layer of devices will have five, six, seven uh, level of access, layer of access. Got it? But your firewall is layer three and layer four device. Once the packet hit to the firewall, firewall will open the header of data. Header. 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 Now means your security guard come to know where you have to come, where you have to go, to whom you want to meet. Now what security guard will do? It will check in the backend database and check whether he has to allow or disallow. Similarly, after gathering the source and destination information, firewall has to decide. It's a parameter security device, right? Securing the unauthorized the unauthorized connection, the firewall has to decide whether connection has to be allowed or disallowed. Yes or no? It has checked from access list or no? So based on what information, firewall will be deciding whether connection has to be allowed, disallowed, whether connection is suspicious, so I should disallow connection is legitimate, I should allow, right? Based on what information, security guard has a state away like computer, email, or call letter, and anything you can decide. But firewall decided based on what? Hmm? Based on what information? Some. Depending on some sort of rules, he will decide. Either firewall, ACL table. The list. There is a table. There is a list. We call as ACL. ACL. Access control list. Access control list. Control list. Access control list. The name it suggests itself suggests access control. There is a list which control the access. Yes or no? Access means allow this communication. Has to be allowed or disallowed. Which control 
access we call it access control list get a mind which has the which has the data based on that our file will decide whether connection has to be allowed this right this acl is inside the firewall get a mind acl is guys guys kindly mute your mic up once you speak lot of noise is coming from your end acl so for example you have bought this firewall from cisco this is cisco firewall cisco is a vendor name right developer name and firewall name is ase for example they have cisco ase firewall you have bajaj pulsar right pulsar is a is a product name and bajaj is the vendor name similarly cisco is the vendor developer and firewall name is ase i have cisco ase firewall i have checkpoint firewall i have fortinet fortigate firewall so fortinet is the vendor name fortigate is the firewall name right i have blue code proxy so blue code is the vendor name and uh, proxy sg the uh, uh, proxy name get okay, mine so so for example you have bought this firewall from cisco there are multiple vendors uh, 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 which which uh, for example you have bike right bike is the technology similarly firewall is the technology there are multiple vendor means multiple developer who develop the firewall right some of the famous vendors are cisco then you have uh, Uh, Fortinet. Hello, Alto. Fortinet. Right. Apart from that, like Sophos, Cyber Room, WatchGuard. WatchGuard. Uh, These these are small scale firewalls. So suppose WatchGuard. Uh, these are small scale, small and medium enterprise uh, firewall. Generally, big company will use Fortinet, Firewall, to Checkpoint, Juniper. These are some of the popular uh, firewall vendors, right? Cisco. These all. Ideally, I mean, firewall can be hardware or software, but ideally, majority of the company will be, will go with the hardware device. You understand, right? Software means what you can achieve from hardware. Similar, you can achieve from software also. means in that case you have to deploy a server configure a server on which you deploy a software but if you have hardware that operating system is already deployed on the hardware and it comes like plug and play kind of a device you don't have to install any software you will have a one hardware on which firewall feature is already deployed you just have to plug and play configure based on your requirement get a mind understand so uh, ideally most of the time this firewall is is hardware firewall Okay, man. So now, for example, you have bought this firewall from Cisco. From whom? From whom you buy this firewall? From Cisco. Cisco. Once you buy this firewall from Cisco, right? You know, then you have to allow. You have to allow the correction, internet correction to Cisco firewall, right? So Cisco, once you uh, uh, install this, then you have to establish a connection. You have to allow a connection to Cisco cloud. Cisco IP address you have to allow the guys to Cisco cloud. Cisco have the R and D team, research and development team, research team, right? Who does the research? Which all the IP addresses? Which all the IP addresses or port numbers are involved in any kind of suspicious activities or might have involved? It is a kind of probable list, right? List of IP address or some of the well known port, some of the port number which are highly involved. being used on having malware communication phishing communication any kind of malicious communication get a point so they update this ip list and port number on the acl which is inside the firewall as soon as they will research they will update but it depends if any attack happened recently for example what are the ip address involved in that attack is the high security signature this this update called signature If he are the IP address is a combination of IP address and port number, we call a signature. Get a mind signature the update. Your Windows update comes right. Windows update your 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 mobile uh, operating system update, Android update. Update is not always a feature update. Update many times is security update. <coughs> Maybe your Windows or any operating system have some weaknesses. Right, so they will update 
extend the update so that they can you can patch those weaknesses. Yes or no? Those are based on severity. Sometimes high severity update will come, then you have to update only. It's a mandatory update. Get in mind? Sometime, okay, once in a month update come, once in a year update come, normal update, feature update and all. Similarly, if any IP is updated, means uh, recently attack, as soon as they come to know, they will send the update to the firewall ACL to update. So that on the live attack, new attack, recent attack, it can secure your network. But some probable list, generally all the vendor will have one day, once in a week, they will updating the list signature. See, major, almost all the devices on security working on based on signatures. Signature is nothing but the predefined information. Based on that, device will decide what is valid, what is invalid. That means what is authorized, what is unauthorized. The information can be different based on type of devices. For example, for firewall, signature is IP address and port number. For proxy, signature is domain name, URL. For email gateway, signature is email ID, message is email ID. Yes or no? We'll talk about those devices. But firewall work on port number, port number and protocol, port number and IP address protocol, right? Protocol can be UDB, UDB, but port and IP address matters. So now this R&D team, research team will send the update this ACL regularly, right? This ACL may have 30,000, 40,000, 1 lakh, 2 lakh, 5 lakhs of IPs here. Sometime combination of port numbers. Get mind? So now list is being updated. Now, as soon as packet hit to the route uh, firewall, firewall open a source IP destination and port number, and it will check whether particular IP address or port number is a part of ACL or not. ACL means a part of suspicious list, means blacklisted IP or suspicious IP address. In that case, if it is part of list, it will block the IP address, block the communication, deny the communication. Then you will see on the firewall record the logs also. One extent came from particular IP address, particular destination IP, this particular destination page, and port, and firewall action is deny. Deny means firewall has disallowed the traffic, connection has been denied. Action has been denied. If there is no, there is no signature, that means no IP address, in that case, firewall will allow the connection, right? Get it, So this is, this update we call a signature. Here, signature is IP address and port number. So this address, this, this list, we call a signature. Firewall does not have signature that time. When, then, when, uh, you know, the attack come, firewall does not have signature. I will not call as, okay, firewall does not have uh, IP information and proxy do not have that time URL information and email gateway does not have the email ID information. I have tell specifically like this, I will tell that my security devices does not have signature. All we call a signature only, but based on a type of device, a different, different information. Signature is nothing but the predefined information, which vendors define or you define. Based on that, security device will check whether connection is legitimate or not, authorized or unauthorized. Get in mind? So there will be scenario where <clears throat> connection comes, firewall has allowed the connection, but connection was actually a malicious connection. But firewall vendor was not aware, and resulting vendor has not updated the information on the ACL, and firewall did not come to know the connection is malicious, resulting firewall has allowed a connection. That is the reason, that is the reason we'll have so many other devices, and we have the same, we are here to monitor network 24 by 7, because we cannot trust these, all security devices work on predefined information signature. If no signature, successful compromise, we call a zero day attack. Zero day attack means none of your security devices are having signature to detect particular communication as a malicious, right? And resulting successful compromise, successful communication will happen and successful compromise will happen. It's a kind of, you have security guards, but still you have CCTV or surveillance. And some people are uh, sitting on uh, central location and monitoring, CCTV monitoring. Oh, this is, this is then they will call security guard to catch him. Similarly, in the SOC, we'll use some tool, they're called SIM tool, S-I-E-M. SIM tool, security information and event management. So all the security guard, whatever communication happening, allow, disallow, all will send the logs to your SIM. And using a SIM, will monitor 24 by seven, what communication is happening. CCTV, you monitor 24 by seven, right? 
अच्छा दिस इज दिस इज जंपिंग द बाउंड्री लेट मी कॉल टू सिक्योरिटी गार्ड सिक्योरिटी गार्ड इज देयर ऑन द ग्राउंड राइट सीसीटीवी इंजीनियर सीसीटीवी यू कैन नॉट कैच एनीवन बिकॉज सीसीटीवी और सीसीटीवी इज नॉट अ पार्ट इज नॉट एक्टिवली इन्वॉल्व इन कम्युनिकेशन yes or no people are coming from outside coming inside cctv team is sitting here they are not interrupting anyone but if anything found they will call someone who has actually interrupted me security guard similarly your sim work sim work same as cctv survey alliance sim see this cctv those this security device will send the information to the sim sim will correlate and then you will have full visibility of your network Who is coming? What connection is coming? What connection is going? Right? If if high number of connections coming in, unusual activities. How many connections are going out? So many email has came. Email comes from suspicious IP address, but none of the security devices have captured it. So it will give the visibility across all security postures, and this security posture will come through logs. Router will route the traffic, generate the logs. Firewall will generate the logs. Your antivirus will generate the logs, or so many other devices that we'll be talking about. All will generate the logs, and you will have. We have one mute. I'll remove you from the meeting. Abhijit, why you are not meeting yourself? I'm not going to tolerate this. If anybody is keeping my unmute, and some noise is coming, so what I'm saying is, what I'm saying. Ah, <coughs> huh. so using SIM tools, you will have visibility for all security posture. You can see. Oh, this is coming. Corner. How I can see this high number of traffic coming on this particular port number? Even it is let's meet port number traffic tra 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 is coming on port number four three, but this is unusual because daily at this many hour of trend you are seeing around fifty lakhs connection, but today there are three crores connection, unusual abnormal. Yes or no? I have of uh, all security posture as well as we can create some alerts also. If I see one from one particular email ID, there are more than hundred email came. Uh, towards our organization, towards one, uh, multiple email ID, it can be a phishing campaign. Even email gateway has allowed that connection, but within short period of time, hundred of email coming. Maybe somebody is targeting your company and running the phishing campaign. Or you have won a lottery, or you change your company password. You are going password is going to expire. Change it, and uh, you know infiltrate doing the uh, password taking the credential infiltration. Yes or no? so we can see it the all security posture using sim tool this is what the work of sock team like cctv survey monitor okay, this is suspicious when the suspicious activity found security guard uh, sorry cctv will call security guard to catch him similarly if you see this an ip address will ask firewall team to block the ip address because this is device are actively involved in the communication intercepting the packet cctv guy cannot catch the person He has to call security guard. Similarly, being a same team, SOC team, we may not have access to firewall team. Firewall, these are active devices on the network. We'll have to raise the incident to the firewall team, ask them to block it. Some some malware found. We have to ask desktop team to scan the system from network. We have to ask desktop team to isolate the system from the network. Right? Means we'll create the incident and we'll be assigned to respective team for further action. Sometimes, I mean, small company, you might have access to take some some action yourself. But in big company, oh, my SOC team will be incident response team. Incident came, you find out all the information, attach the information, assign respective team for further action. Get in mind, understand? So this ACL will have the IP information, port information. Sometimes, for example, one connection came here. It has been allowed by the firewall, but it was a successful compromise. But firewall was not having signature. For a SIM tool, you monitor. Okay, some malicious communication is happening on the firewall, <laughs> happening on the network, and on this particular IP address. Then you have to take the action. Then you raise a case with the firewall team. Then firewall team will block the IP address. Yes or no? That means this list ACL. ACL. There are two type of list: dynamic and static. We call it dynamic policy or static policy. This static policy means static rule. You can create yourself what has to be allowed, allowed what has to be disallowed. One is based on the dynamic list, which has been updated by the firewall firewall vendor. I am calling it dynamic list because list is not fixed. 
some IP addresses which are involved today since last six months on black, some suspicious property, maybe now it has been gone with the good hand, legitimate people, good company, then firewall will identify and remove those IP address. That's the reason this list is dynamic. Some IP might not be involved, might be involved in suspicious property today, but not tomorrow. Some IP address is not involved today, but might be involved tomorrow. So these update and updates and removal, this is called update. Adding, removing, adding, removing happening by this vendor dynamically. This list is not fixed, that is called a dynamic list. And this is called a static list or a static policies. List will be static. What IP you want to allow yourself or what IP with what port? For example, I can create a policy. This, for example, is a facebook.com, right? Facebook.com. Facebook.com should be accessible for everyone. On which port number? 144. 443. 443. I can create a policy on the, my firewall. Any, any. Any, any means. Anyone, any any uh, source IP, any port number towards this particular destination IP address on this port number, over this would be allowed and rest should be disallowed. Means anybody can access the facebook.com on port number 43 only. Other port, if you are accessing, trying to do the access, trying to do the telnet and trying to send an email should be disallowed, for example. Right? So I can create a specific role. This source destination all communication or this to this decision on this particular port number, this particular protocol. A specific policy, specific rule I can create. We call it a static rule. A static rule will have more uh uh the square. Uh 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 are you the word pull yeah more uh Preference. Hindi se bol do, sir. English hum translate kar lenge. Nahi, preference ka ek word hota hai. I can use more preference. That is a good technical word. I, I missed it. I use it in Splunk session. Uh, that is a good technical word. But I can see the yeah, yeah, yeah. static rules. Matrix. Priority. Uh, ah, that more is not a word. But, uh, uh, when we talk about Splunk, <laughs> Splunk has multiple, uh, same configuration, multiple uh, files. We use some word. Uh, uh, any so metric values, metric values. Anyways, leave it. Leave it. You can see it here. A static rule will have more preference, will have first preference than dynamic. For example, if you created a rule that this communication should be allowed toward this this destination, right? So if same source have been blacklisted already in dynamic list, it will not come in the it will not take preference. Your rule, what do you have allowed, what you have denied, <clears throat> which will be first preference. Even though the priority it should be denied by the uh, dynamic list, but since you created the allow rule, it will be allowed. If you create a deny rule, even though the list is not there in the ACL, it still it will be denied. Okay, so one rule. Uh, so in what cases you have to allow and what cases you have to deny? For example, <clears throat> one of your uh, vendor is accessing some of the resources you have given access to them, some application. Vendor is not able to access the application because your firewall is blocking. Because your firewall is blocking. Maybe because vendor IP is listed as a blacklisted IP in the ACL. Hence, it is blocking, right? Then uh, uh, you raise the case with the network team. Your vendor will say, I'm not able to access the application. The network team will ask you to troubleshoot, for troubleshooting where it is blocking. So how do you come to know? How do you, anybody knows if this computer is not able to communicate access this website, but problem may be on your network. For example, this is a part of company, any company network, right? So how will you come to know, how will you segregate the problem, whether the connection is blocking, means he's not able to access me somewhere it is blocking. That's all. Or blocking means maybe somewhere um, the communication uh, uh, routers does not have route. Yes or no? Means some router does not know how to reach particular destination. Yes or no? So what happens is in this case, uh, how will you segregate? Where is the problem? Problem is in our network. Problem is his network. A problem is in the internet world. Internet world, there are less chances. Yes or no? Because ISP will, we are not going to block anything ideally. So there are less chances on ISP, but sometime it may happen. Sometime, but there are rich, rich chances. IP had, generally ICP does not block anything. So, how will I come to know? Where is the problem? Trace route. Trace route command. 
right? Using trace route or trace set command of the Linux, I think, and Windows, uh, Windows trace set and Linux trace route, right? So you can run this command to check where the communication is being blocked. Get it, So in this case, one packet will be sent. So once you once you tell that we are we have given access to one of the user this portal access, but user is unable to access. He will raise the case the network team or firewall team to check. Then your network team will ask, okay, do one thing, ask him to, to share the tracer result, trace route result. Trace route result, right? Then what he will type, he will open the command line, message of CMD, command line, and he will type trace out an IP address, for example, 199.0.2.5. He'll run the command tracer and IP address. What happens in the backend? It will create one, it will generate one packet and send. First of all, the packet will go to their, your gateway. Your gateway, your gateway router IP will first, first hope. We call us hopes. Router, we call us hopes. By default, it generates the result of 16 hopes, means in between 16 routers. Because once it will leave the packet, your router. Then it will ISP gateway router. Then ISP on domestic gateway router, then internal router, like all we call it hosts. By default, it check up to 16 hosts, but you have option to increase. You can increase by default 16 hosts, right? So first of all, you can see in the result, your router IP will come. Okay, it reached router. Then if second hope is coming, information IP address, that means it already crossed, means it allowed by your gateway router. It has a path. Then it go, okay, ECT internet. For example, you have ECT. ACT internet IP address, written, it will be written name also ACT internet. Host name will be written ACT internet. You come to know, okay, ACT internet. Uh, then uh, ACT domestic internet gateway, it will run the route. IP address came means connection reached till there. For example, one IP address come over the route, for example, uh, this uh, uh, Singapore particular IP address, Singapore router IP address somewhere. After that connection is not going. That means connection has been blocked or route is not available after that hope. If last IP address of your firewall IP address or your router IP address, that means connection is blocking here. If last IP address, your network IP address means connection is blocking here. If last IP address, your internet IP address means connection is blocking here. That mean, if last hope IP address is my firewall IP address, that means my firewall is blocking the connection. In that case, We'll create the static rule here. We'll allow uh, a particular IP address in my firewall and the static rule. In this case, we have to allow, either you have two options, either you can ask person, Bhaiya, your IP is blacklisted on the firewall. Better you raise a case with multiple blacklist companies who are bl blacklisting your website, blocking your IP address. Ask them to unblock your website. Might be previously when you get this IP address was involved in any suspicious activity. That's the reason it is blacklist. In internet, there are some sites like Telus Intelligence. On further session, on the SOC, we are going to talk about we'll, with practically Telus Intelligence, IP Wide, MX Toolbox, IP MX Force, Virus Total. There are multiple open source tools available. Many free uh, tools are available on the internet using which you can check it out. If your IP or anybody, any connection you see from any IP is blacklist or poor reported involved in any kind of suspicious activity or might have involved in any kind of suspicious activities, we can check, right? So in this case, we have to allow, and sometimes you see some successful communication happen, compromise happen or communication happen, but firewall has not blocked it, but IP address is actually suspicious, we can disallow it. Yes or no? Static rule we can create. Understand? So this is the working of firewall. Firewall is layer three, layer four device, based on the IP address and port number, it allow or disallow the connection. We can manually create the static rule, the static policies to allow or disallow. Whenever every application you deploy, new application, you have to ask firewall team to allow the communication to open the port number. By, by default, firewall may block the port number to secure your applications so that outside people cannot go on any other port number, cannot, should not be open, of course, right? So you have to raise a case to open the firewall port number change request to open the firewall port number so that can, can, can it, firewall can communicate outside or uh, so the particular device can communicate outside or outside people to be able to access the your application. Understand?
but if there is no ip though is no signature resulting successful compromise zero day attack port number is not blocked ip address is not uh, there on the acl resulting successfully compromise will happen that is called a zero day attack for the firewall if firewall so we'll take an example of other device in case firewall fails in what situation firewall can fail right we'll discuss on the next session tomorrow Okay, guys, thank you for joining. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow. The homework will be TCP UDP, right? Uh, you have to prepare TCP UDP and you have to run this command. There are multiple commands in the homework. Trace it, you write, trace it. You have to, you should know these are basic questions. Basic. What is the use of trace it? You run the trace it command, trace it. Ping. Uh, ping to check the connectivity, P I N G. Ping. Yeah. Sir, but uh, I need to ask. Uh... Are something uh, the solution pin is always blocked. Sir, I am giving the homework. Just hold down. First, you write down what okay. I'm saying. Uh, uh, what I'm saying. Trace okay. out or trace out. Ping, IP config, telnet, SSH, SSH, SSH. As, uh, and net stat, net stat. Anybody knows what is the use of net stat command? Net stats. Net of traffic. Net stats command. Anybody knows? Who check the random the all the connections. It, it show the ports open or close from uh, other sites. Not other side. You can't check other side. Locally listening port. In 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 this this particular uh, uh, system. You can check what port numbers are being used already. For example, if you want to deploy, for example, I want to deploy my, my Splunk, I want to deploy. Splunk will listen to port number, for example. Sir, connection lost. Triple nine seven. Triple nine seven, right? So whenever I deploy Splunk, I have to assign port number triple nine seven. But there might be possible. There might be possible that triple nine seven is being used by some other application. You are installing, but it is not getting successful. Because my deep port number triple seven is blocked by other application. So you can run net start command on your system and check what port number are open already unused and what port number are used. You can run net start command. This is the homework. Run the red, run this command on your system, right? Net start. You check the Google IP address and then try to ping IP address. Run the trace at command on a particular IP address, right? And check the result. Uh, UDP TCP is the also a homework that you have to go through. So make sure that don't you mark the attendance as well. Hey guys, do you have any question? Somebody has any question? So Tatian is already over. If you want to, if you have a office, you can wind up. So somebody, I think, I had some question. Some. Are you? Hello, sir. You sir, can, you just, can you just Hello, give me a quickly brief about ACL? Like you started when you started, like. Firewalls, then you introduce ACL. So, can uh -huh. you just give me a like either within one line? What ACL? Yes, sir. ACL means access control list, right? Which decide what has to be allowed, what has to be disallowed. That we call as ACL. ACL, which have the list signature based on that, which is decide what has to be allowed, what has to be disallowed. Every security device will have the ACL. Right, but ACL information signature can be different for different different type of devices. Right, but ACL means access control list means based on that it defines what is authorized, what is unauthorized. We call as ACL. Okay, present means not here. Attendance. I see some people are doing present, present all the time. <laughs> not here. You have to, uh, you know, share your learning experience and what you have learned on a YouTube video. Not here. In the, okay, okay, okay. Zoom, your present is not attendance is not being marked. Okay, what do you have learned? Okay. You have to tell on the YouTube video. That's a part Hello. of okay. Sure, sir. Okay, thank Hello. you guys. See you tomorrow. Thank you. Sir. Hello. 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 Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. Thank you, sir. Quiet. Sir, thank you, sir. Sir, 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 uh, that uh, that I have, we have to read, no? And that's the only video is radio TCP UDP. Yeah. 
9 minute the video no uh, maybe it is 9 minute i, I don't remember but that's the only video in our channel for tcp or duty only okay. one video okay okay here okay. you are learning learning experience on tcp udp also what you have learned okay fine okay thank you and how was your experience yeah yeah what is the major difference between dynamic and starting list dynamic mean getting change right yeah uh, change, uh, in the uh, also we can change right it's not automatically getting change if you change then only manually then only okay. it's getting static ip means you can change right manually but still we call it static ip because it will be static it will not change automatically then we automatically get change okay once it is requested it ah, changed okay that's reason quite dynamic and static okay hello sir yes hello sir actually in the acl list we have a do the dynamic but every time attacker use the new new ip hmm. How, uh, that is the reason that is the reason we we have some other devices and still we are not secure we have sim to monitor we are here to monitor and that's the yeah. reason using this device we cannot show that we are 100 percent secure attacker may use new ip address yes yes many times yeah hmm. and okay. so uh, which ip we have to ping a uh, tracer or uh, I, I any ip address check the google ip address just to practice on the google yeah, ip yeah. Uh, also write the ns lookup command ns lookup some people have already NS left lookup. ns lookup yeah. uh, using ns lookup command you can resolve if you have simexpert.com you run the ns lookup command especially simexpert you'll come to know what is the ip address of simexpert use it by running ns lookup command okay okay note down as ns lookup also sir. NS lookup. Sir. Yes. Sir, can we do it on office laptop? Ah, no problem. This, this are, this is not uh, like uh, any malicious command, right? Okay. Connectivity related issues. You, anybody, every laptop, personal laptop, anywhere you can run. Sir, so do not... you upload any videos on OSI? OSI model. OSI, I have planned to create a video on YouTube, but myself, I don't have as of now. I have plan. I will create once I get time. Okay, sir. thank you. Okay. Yes, Hello, sir. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Sir, can I uh, use SIM uh, tool in the, my office laptop or not? What, what? Uh, SIM tool. SIM tool is, uh, I am able to use in my company hmm. laptop or not? See, I mean, uh, for our lab, for our lab perspective, you're talking about? Yes, yes, yes. For I think you have to install VPN client and company laptop, you might have you might not have admin access, right? So yes, yes. in that case, you have to use personal laptop. You will not be, uh, you know, authorized to install any software. You would have yes, your personal yes. laptop. Yes, yes. Hello. Yes. Uh, and yes, actually, we saw about NAT, right? Uh, network address translation. Uh -huh. So it's the uh, same thing. There's a pad uh, which is a port address translation. Right, right. Can port address can be. Port order also can translate it. One port to another port can be translated. Okay. There are port number four three, but actually, destination will go on some other port number. Sometimes, if any port number is not open. Right, but inside you have allowed port number five five three five five three, but outside people you have to go on four four three only. Then they will send the packet on four four three, but inside your network it, it will go on now five five three. Right, that you can also map one port number another port number. Okay, okay, thank you. Okay. Hello, sir. Yes. Uh, in ACL, we have to like uh, uh, set the rules like uh, only IP addresses are port number. Combination and, of port number. Only IP address also if you you want to block or allow. If you want to see if you want to block any IP address, just for Cisco for always you talk about just run S H S H U and Sun and IP address. It will send that port block that particular uh, IP address. If you want to disallow only means it will block for all port total block. If you run the Sun command and IP address, it will total block all communication inside outside all will block. But if you want to allow certain 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 port number particular IP address or to the certain destination, you can create rule this particular port IP address. Toward this particular destination block, or this particular IP toward this particular uh, destination on this particular port number allow, and rest will be denied. This kind of combination of uh, application based on application, okay, TCP traffic will be allowed, not ICMP or not other applications, not HTTPS, right? HTTPS means port number four three, right? So you can allow or disallow based on IP address port number as well. Thank you. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. Bye. See you tomorrow.